Hello, my name is Caio Fontes. I'm a computer science student at University of Sao Paulo, and the project I will present today is the prediction of antiviral activity in peptides from venomous animals using an ensemble deep learning model. My advisor was Dr. Milton Yutaka, and the project was developed inside the Applied Toxinology Laboratory in Buntantan Institute. First, we will talk about venoms. Venoms are heterogeneous mixtures of various molecules, such as inorganic salts, small organic molecules, and enzymes and peptides. It is believed that arachnid venoms are composed in part by not yet identified antiviral peptides. But what are antiviral peptides or AVPs? They are a subset of antimicrobial peptides, AMPs, which in turn are small molecules that perform defense functions in the immune system of all living beings. These compounds have been studied as possible alternatives to traditional antiviral drugs, which normally have severe adverse effects. Our motivations for this study are A single venomous organism can house millions of potential AVPs, especially in its venom and toxins. Since the mechanism of action of each bioactive peptide is extremely specific, we cannot apply a simple filter for selecting between them. Even after selecting a candidate, the synthesis and experimental validation of a single peptide has an extremely high cost, with a low success rate for the trial. The few existing computational AVP prediction tools have low accuracy with a high false positive rate. In this project, we have developed a computational model with an ensemble deep learning architecture capable of identifying if a given amino acid sequence has antiviral activity. The model will be utilized to identify these compounds in arachnid venoms, helping the identification of new bioactive peptides. The first step in the development of the model was gathering sequence data about the peptides. For the positive set, we gather experimentally validated AMPs from open repositories such as APD3, DBASP, CAMP, and others. For the negative set, we use peptides produced by the in silico digestion with trypsin of uniprot proteins with a filter, not toxic, not effector, not excreted, etc. The intention behind these filters is to guarantee that no peptide in the negative set will be an AMP of any functional type. The final data set contains 15,000 experimentally validated AMPs, from which 2,800 are AVPs, and more than 1 million peptides in the negative set. The data processing was comprised of the following steps. Firstly, the sequences were gathered from the open repositories as described in the last slide. Next, we performed an homology search with CD heat in order to eliminate redundant peptides. We then selected peptides from the negative data set in the same quantity as in the positive class. And finally, we split the data in three partitions, training with 70% of the sequences, validation and testing, each one with 15% of the sequences. The model has an ensemble architecture in which the results of two independent predictive models are linearly combined to generate the final score. For each peptide, its sequence is directly given as input to the LSTM model while the random forest model receives as input some numerical descriptors calculated from the sequence. The two models perform their prediction if the peptide has a desired activity or not, and then we combine these predictions in our final score. The score value can be interpreted as the belief of the model that the given peptide has a desired activity, and it's always a number between 0 and 1. The LSTM model is a bidirectional multilayer recurrent neural network that reads a single amino acid from the sequence in both directions at each time step. The random forest model combines the predictions of hundreds of simple decision trees in order to classify the given protein, utilizing the given physical chemical properties. We performed a feature selection step for the random forest model, in which we tested the performance of the model with four different feature sets in a range of hyperparameters for both models. The pure LSTM feature set represents an architecture without the random forest model. It acts as the control group. In both the AVP and AMP prediction tasks, the top performing model utilizes feature set 4, although all feature sets were roughly equivalent in the end. When identifying AVPs and performing training in both the training and validation partitions and evaluating its results in the test partition, the model obtained a 95% accuracy 
in an area under the curve of 0 0.977. In the AMP prediction task, with the same separation of the partitions, the model obtained 92% accuracy in an area under the curve of 0 0.976. We also performed a comparison with our, between our model and other available tools for AVP identification. For this comparison, we evaluated the three tools utilizing all sequences gathered in the initial steps before the homology reduction. The table shows the true positives and false negatives in each, in each data set. We can see that the both available tools struggle to classify correctly all known AVPs. This can be explained due to the increase of, in the number of known AVPs since the time of their publication, making the training set for our model larger. They also struggle to classify correctly the known AVPs, misfiring a number of times. Both kinds of errors would be very costly in the application of a tool like this, since each misclassification could mean an, an extra experimental trial gone wrong. Although our method seems to outperform the current tools at a first glance, Due to differences in the training data, further tests are necessary. In particular, both of the tests tools utilize the benchmark dataset described in Takura et al., which was constructed in a similar way to our dataset. Utilizing different forms of the information from the peptides as input for the model seems to have dramatically increased the prediction accuracy. We plan on making this tool available through our web interface and through the code on GitHub. Thank you for listening, and we'd like to thank the supporting agencies in this project.